Ann Katarina, Marika, Julia, Michael, Jacinta, Jane, Christine, Stan, Zorma, and we have a couple of people who will come late, but now it goes to Bob. Okay. Hi. Oh, there you go. Give you three guesses what we're going to talk about. Well, just to remind you, if anyone needs reminding, that you are already that. Because that is all there is. And the conceptual ideas or concepts you have that you are this individual, you are this separate entity, or this person, if it hasn't been recognised and grasped before, another opportunity to see for yourself and know the truth. And as they say in the scriptures, know the truth and the truth will set you free. And what do we need to be free from? The belief or idea that we are separate entities, we are individuals. When the scriptures loudly proclaim that that is all there is. I am that. And there's no I or you other than that. So everything is already that, even though it seems to be separate and apart. And that word seems to be. That's what they call in the text a phenomenal manifestation. And the definition of phenomena is that which appears to be. They're pointing it out there even. That it only appears all this separation appears, seemingly so, like a dream. While you're in the dream, it appears to be very real. But when you wake up from the dream, where does it all go? It all disappears. And there's only might be parts of it that can be remembered. But you realised also, when you wake from the dream, <coughs> that your body hadn't moved off the bed and no words had come out of your mouth. Yet you were taking part in all these activities in the dream. And it seemed to be real. Because it caused the feelings and the emotions, stirred them up, like the thinking does, same way. But then, when what we point to, they call Advaita in the scriptures. Advaita means non-duality. Non-duality is one without a second, not two. There can't be anything other than other than that one. And you only got to look around you here and you see there appears to be many, all different sorts of things in this manifestation. All appearing and seeming to be very real. Even this body, which they're appearing to. This body and the mind. Are you the body? Are you the mind? 
That's what needs to be understood and recognised. And just say, my body, my mind. Just the same as you say, my house, my car, my coat, my hat. You know you're not the house, the car, the coat or the hat. But we take this my body to be something real and substantial. But just the same as my car, you're not the car, you're not the hat. Well, neither are you the body. We call it you and I, divided up into all these different separate parts. But as they point out, its non-duality is one without a second. To put that without a second, meaning one without the other. Not two, only that. And that's the great mantra they tell us. You hear that, you've heard that many, many times before in the scriptures because it's pointed out that I am that, thou art that, this is that, and that's that. Everything is that which we, again we discriminate by putting the words or the labels on. Now have a look at these words or labels. We say when you investigate the body, you see that that's not real. It's not as it's appearing to be. Well, what about these labels, words? Is the word the real? Remember, every word you've ever spoken or likely to speak has been picked up, it's been learnt along the way. And we've taken ourselves to believe that we are this label, this word. Words are all labels. We weren't born with any words. And you didn't pick up words till you were a couple of years old when the capacity of reasoning developed into the body and in this body and we learnt words. We pick up the words from our parents initially. And they told you a little Billy or your little Jane or your little so and so. And you learnt words like I and me and then naturally and we believe that and naturally now when somebody asks you who you are you'll say I am Jane or Bill or whatever your name is. Instead of taking notice of what the scriptures tell you, that it is absolute. The one essence, the non-dual one essence is total, it's absolute. Or in Buddhism they call it the perfect. And uh, we separate it or discriminate it with these words we've learnt, which the word is not the real. You can't drink the word water, you can't swim in it, you won't drown in it. The word fire doesn't burn your mouth, you can't cook with it, you can't eat yourself with it. And all the other words. So what's this me or I? We take it to be what I am and they're pointing out that it is only that, it's not the word of it. And we still believe you are that separate entity, that individual. It's there to be investigated. It's there to look at, test it out. Am I this body? Well, you say my body, my mind. Well, you're saying my body and mind. Who's the me or the my that I'm relating it to? What's this body? And you investigate the body, you'll see the body is made up of air, earth, fire, water, space, elements. Take the air out of your body, see how long it lasts without that element air. It wouldn't last without the air. 
take the body temperature away, you soon get hypothermia and freeze to death. Take the water, your body 60% water. Get off the earth, get out of space, you can't. Take the food and see, all this body made up of these elements, which we call a body, and take it to be this pattern, shape and form that we are. Just the same as the manifestation out there. All the tree, a tree, a bird, a bird. And the, we put labels on all these things, but it's only the one. Everything is that. That's the great mantra, I am that. And you've heard that many, many times. And when you look at it, you'll see that everything, as they say, is that. And you're taking it to be separate, but innately you know it is, because you say, that's the chair I'm sitting in. That's the carpet on the floor. That's the room I'm in. That's the space in the room. That's the tree. That's the flower. That's the bird. That's the insect. Everything is that which we've discriminated and put these labels or words on it that we've learnt or picked up. It's good for us to identify with things with and other people would know what we're talking about. When we say it's a tree or a flower because they've learnt words the same as we have. But as we pointed out, the word's not the real, it's not the thing itself. It's a vibration. Sound. Sound is word. These words that are coming out now are sounds, aren't they? Expressing into things we call words. Just like it hit a note on the piano or a chord, that produces a sound also, which we call it a musical note. And we make mu music is made up of these notes or sounds, just like these words are. Animals and birds and insects like that don't have words. But they have sounds, they haven't got the capacity to, to of reasoning as we have, the same capacity. And so they can't have known enough, but they've still got. A power there, an intelligence there, and uh, they make sounds instead of words. So we've mistaken these words to be what we really are. And that's basically the cause of our problems. Because if I recognise that I am the Absolute, what can you add to the Absolute? Nothing. What can you take away from it? Nothing. Or as they call it in Buddhism, the Great Perfection. What can you add to the perfect? If it's perfect, you can't add anything to it. You can't take anything away from it. But we've lost sight of that, which we never recognised in the first place. When we learnt words, we strayed into the words from our parents and believed it and continued to believe it without question. And we've got all these beliefs. And what's a belief? Well, the definition of belief is an unquestioned acceptance of something in the absence of reason. It means we haven't worked it out, we haven't looked into it. When our parents told you, little Billy or little so-and-so, this is what I am, this is the belief I've got. An unquestioned acceptance of something in the absence of reason, that's the definition, acceptance of an alleged fact. An alleged fact, it's not the fact itself, it's alleged without positive knowledge or proof. 
So if you get the sense of that, wouldn't you want to look into some of these beliefs? Because when you recognise, what's your problem? The problem in each and every one of us when we believe we are these separate entities, we've got some concepts or beliefs. He or she don't, doesn't, they don't like me, or I'm not good enough, or I'm fearful, or this is not true, or this is not real. We've got all conceptual beliefs on all these things. Taking the belief to be real, and it causes the dissatisfaction, the unhappiness, the grief, the fear, the anger, the depression, the guilt, the shame, remorse. All these psychological problems come up from that belief. Taken to be real. What happens if you investigate it and realise that the false cannot stand up to investigation and you see it, the false is false and you no longer believe in it been questioned and looked into. So the suffering or the fear or the anxiety that that belief caused, can that remain there if you've got nothing to relate to? If you're not relating it to the separate entity, the individual? What must it be then? Be as it is. Just as it is in itself. What is what is? It's certainly not what was or not will be. It's this which is going on right here, right now in this immediacy. This is what is. Without putting any concepts, ideas, images or beliefs on it. So that means it's unaltered, just as it comes out, unmodified uncorrected, no preference, no partiality, no comparison. And everything left as it is will change because when you investigate that also you'll see there's nothing static in this manifestation. It's transient. This body that you're sitting in right now and believe to be you is changing right now in this moment. Thousands of souls are dying in it, not just one or two. There's trillions of cells in the body. So the thousands are dying right now and being replaced by the food that's been eaten and the breath and the things, the functioning of that intelligence energy. So this body, like everything else, is transient. The earth is moving around the sun right now at some terrific pace. It's transient, also it's constantly changing. And everything is transient. So we've got this idea of time. We've taken on this belief that there is time. There's a past because, the see, we don't recognise the transit as it's changing right in this moment. But you look back on it, you'll see there's such and such, there was a past where I lived some time ago, years ago, or months ago, or whatever. So we've got this concept of time. And then because we've got this concept and belief in it, what happens? We're relating to it constantly. Again, relationship, relativity, duality. That's what relationship is, duality, relative to. It's relative to some substantial belief, static belief we think is real, and everything's related to that not recognising the transient and the, and the constant change and the spontaneousness of it. If it's got no time to it, no past or no future, isn't it just as it is right now? 
So when you question that and have a look, you question your beliefs, as we say, that's what you need to be seen through. Is there such a thing, any reality to these beliefs? If I ask myself what is wrong right now, if I don't think about it? Or is there a past if I don't think about it? And I realise that the past is gone. Yesterday, last week, last year, and as far back as we can remember, it's past now. It's dead. It's gone. In the future, I will become something, I will change, implies a future time, but becoming is not what is right now. And it's only and always ever being. Being cannot become. So future and past are concept. The past is dead. The future hasn't happened. The beingness spontaneously fresh in you is going on right now and it's only momentary, it only lasts a spontaneous, can't even say it's got a full movement to it. It's only a throb or a pulsation. And it vibrates spontaneously into the ever fresh, seemingly so. So we're locked into these concepts of time. And you wouldn't be happy, wouldn't be hit sitting here if you weren't, if you were happy with it and enjoyed it. But we all have these concepts and beliefs. We're fearful, we're anxious, we're separate. We're not whole, we're not complete. We've got these beliefs and believing in them and suffering with the labels we put on it, the words, this is fear, this is anger, this is guilt, this is shame, remorse, unhappiness, jealousy, envy, all the psychological problems that we label, and until they're labelled, where are they? We label and believe in the labels. And then we go and seek treatment and get into more and more. Somebody tells us a story, you've got to do this and do that, and we get the story and carry on with the belief. And attached to the story, now that's, be, that's become part of the belief, the conceptual image. That I'm bothered, the Australian, I'm fearful, I'm anxious, I'm unhappy. Instead of being the absolute, now I've attached to the story. And it's worse than what it was before. And so long it keeps growing because we keep using words, more words. Never still for a moment. So locked into the conceptual, the beliefs. But when it's recognised that it doesn't have to be that way, with a little bit of investigation, you can know the truth. <coughs> And that's what they tell you, know the truth. Don't believe in it, don't think about it or understand it, but really know it, <coughs> recognise it. Know the truth and the truth will set you free. It frees you, releases you from all these conceptual issues, beliefs. And as I say, then again, you can have a look and really say, what's wrong with right now if I don't think about it? Well, if you're not thinking any of the belief, you're not attached to it anything. What is wrong? Can you say it's good, bad, pleasant, painful, happy, unhappy, without a concept? Well, I can't. I don't know what you can do. And so there is a release from the bondage of self. And that's what they tell you. They call it the bondage of self. That's what we tied up in. That's our bondage. And they tell you, know the truth. 
and the truth will set you free. And uh, recognize that your body, when you look at that body and understand it, you'll be able to do like Christ says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. That thought, I am, is not I was or I will be, it's this sense of presence, the I am this. And they're telling me that's the way, that's the truth, that's the life, in this immediacy, this presence awareness. That's another label they put on, but Satchitananda, existence, consciousness, bliss, other two factors, Nama Rupa, body, mind. Existence. Anyone who is not existing right now, instead of putting the concepts on, oh, I'm so and so, I'm like this, have a look. Negate your beingness. Negate your existence if you can. You know, no, I'm existing. Anyone who's un unconscious or unaware right now, you know, no, I'm present here, aware here. I'm aware, I'm not unaware. And anyone who's not happy to be, well, none of you want to be dead, do you? So you, you know, you mightn't be. There might be a lot of pain in this living. This at the right moment, you don't want to lose sight of it. Just the same, you want to be that life. So you're really happy to be. And that's the Satchit Ananda Nama Rupa that we put on the label, and you are that already. If you can't negate your beingness and you know for certain that you are, what is there to seek? And who, above all, who is there to seek it? You can only be believed this, this believed in me, me, Bob, the Australian, the good fella. I've got to become this because I'm suffering. Put these concepts on and locked in. What if I realised or recognised I am the Absolute? Nothing can be added to the Absolute, nothing can be taken away. There's no one superior to me, no one inferior to me. And I don't need anything or anybody to change it. Because it's spontaneous, it's natural, it's continually changing by itself. And the so-called change is changeless because the seeming change occurs in it, but it's still the changeless beingness that is appearing in it. And you are that. Well, you can't complain about me talking too long today because <laughs> we'll end it there and give you all a go to get into it. Did we ever complain that you talk too long? Oh, yeah. I hear it, yeah. Never, never, yeah. never ever. You were an hour this morning. We had three quarters of an hour. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. And that's everybody has that same capacity saying what's being said here, whatever terms you use. Yes, so uh, welcome everyone and everyone who is online. We have 20 plus people uh, varying who have no questions today. They just shower the love and literally I have a lot of beautiful messages of people showering love at everyone. So <laughs> that's a good beginning and now we have a comment from British Julia. Haha, ha, my ego loves I'm the absolute. It completely tries to latch onto it. Yeah, that's a nice idea. But the absolute is really what we're pointing to is not the idea. Of course, you know that. And uh, Julia, British Julia says also, Bob, if you please comment on how long you speak, it's because they want more, not less. Because <laughs> they want more. We want you to speak more. If we comment on your length of speech, is because you try to cheat and get away with less rather than more. <laughs> well, don't they say less is better? 
Well, those who believe that are not in this room. <laughs> Such wonderful pointers, amazing spiel as usual, says not come. Thank you. And Clement JB says, sends hearts and not come is sending laughing out loud. So you've been laughed at. You may just as well say a few more words. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, you've got some questions there, surely. Or oh, tell us about it. There's so many, if they've got a good grasp of it. Point it out and let, let everyone know that it's not just for the few. Everybody has the same chance. As you were speaking, I was thinking about um, knowing, that word knowing, and um, I think it's sort of synonymous when you use it with being, um, with just being, knowing. Um, and it's not like a fact that you're knowing. You're knowing, well, it's, it's beyond words, this knowing. Huh? So it's if you're in this space, not a space, but there's no place, but there's just a knowing that I am without all the words or whatever, that's it. That's what you're referring to. The non-conceptual awareness, yeah. right? Yes. Um, there are people that I have met or I have known who have a belief in an idea of enlightenment. In an idea of enlightenment. There are people that I know who have a belief in this idea of enlightenment. Um, if then, isn't that another way to say a belief? You know, if then, if this, then that, isn't that a belief, kind of an idea, a pointer that something's believed in, if you have that expression, or no? Nah. <laughs> if then, because if I was enlightened, then I would blah, 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 right? Mm. If I was enlightened, then I would be living in this non-conceptual awareness all the time, and there wouldn't be thoughts coming up randomly the way they do also all the time. Uh -huh. And all the time. So I was always referring to some other moment than this one, isn't it? Um, so, I don't know. I was just kind of like thinking about the if-then, yeah. you know. It's a belief called the rule. It's, it's a belief. It's a rule, isn't it? It's like a rule that we have. It's a belief if you have an if-then. I don't know. That's what I was just sort of like thinking about a little bit. Great point. That if you have a, a belief, there was a, a guy who I, I knew before you, he, he used to say everyone is enlightened. They just tell themselves they're not. Mm. And I mentioned that to you. You confirmed that. You're like, yeah, there's only that. How could you not be that? Yeah. How can you not? How can anything be present from that which is omnipresent? Does omni mean some or most or... All. Just that there's no one there to be enlightened. Yes, and there is no one here to be. No, nobody gets like. Uh, yeah, nobody. They, like I like what Julia pointed out is that. Uh, yeah, that's the ultimate prize that me loves. Yeah. That's okay. there's some specialness. Yeah. And that, but the, but I think that the freedom is in the is is not even so much in the specialness, but in the, the the the, the wow. Well, the be the nothing special. <laughs> the just the the being without it adding anything to it. Anyway, that was just beautiful. I can't I can't ramble as well as you can right now. <laughs> yeah, well, I got this concept of enlightenment. What does it actually mean? Well, my take in it, on it is that all these concepts that we've added on to the sense of presence, the knowing that you are, the story, 
has weighed us down. It's the burden we carry. <coughs> the burden of concepts, ideas and images. And they don't they don't tell you that you've got to acquire something or get something or become something. They tell you that you're already that. And they say detach. What do you need to detach from? All these conceptual burdens that we've got, the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, the unhappiness, the extras, from the pain, pure sense of well-being, intelligence, energy, the activity of knowing. So the enlightenment is to drop the weight, mm. drop the burden of, a detach from the burden of concepts and ideas. You'll be a lot lighter. Mm. That freedom, peace and joy will be more obvious and you'll drop into it much more easily. So that is what the so-called enlightenment is, getting rid of the burdens <laughs> that are weighing us down. Mm. And the fear, the anxiety, the stress, the guilt, don't they weigh you down? And when you say, as people have had taste of it, was free from them, they felt, felt much lighter, much freer. Mm. You've had the taste with it. So, make the, the taste, make it more, the presence be more. That, that is all there is only. And don't fixate on the other stuff so much, which you won't bother to do when you get the taste of this. Why do you want to go back into it again? Because <laughs> people say, oh, I lost it. <coughs> well, they haven't lost it. They've just picked up the burden of concepts again, mm. attached to another story. Mm. And just drop them. Let them be. You also talk about the con context of light sometimes when you stop hanging onto those clouds. It becomes clearer and yeah. lighter. So the enlightenment in the term of heaviness and lightness, or the light and the darkness of that obscuring clouds of concepts. Yeah. Either way is a pointer. And there's probably other ways too you can point it. Yeah. It's just Some of you pointer. might have it, yeah. 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 Spontaneous life. That's all that's going on, isn't it? It's fantastic, really. But, um, and you are that. And, and I am that. We're all that. We're not, and, and that we're not special, are we? There's no specialness going on. And attributing specialness to other people is the attempt to get specialness yourself. <laughs> and it doesn't exist. You know, we're, all, we're all just evaporated in, the, in, the, in this moment. And there's nothing to hang on to at all. That's, that's a wonderful thing. And it... The other thing that struck me this morning was simply the fact that uh, there's nothing to add. There's nothing you can add nothing to yourself in this so-called enlightenment. But um, in separation, we're attempting to add everything to ourselves, and that's more why more stillness and hold more quiet. Yes, exactly. Not enough. None. None. Yeah. <laughs> so there we have it free now. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> <laughs>this is not so much about the material but it's about you Bob um, what is what is your reasoning for sharing this information that you share with all of us no reason it's spontaneous 
Mm. Meaning? We, we don't recognize it, you know. It felt like, you know, had to go back and shout it from the house tops. Let everybody know. But soon got, left that behind and <laughs> nobody was listening. <laughs> but after a while, somebody did. Yeah. And from then on, it's gone on since then. It's the only game in town, as far as I'm concerned. And it's really a pointer to not attach too much of a reasoning and a story to what you're doing. Like if you look at the nature, you see the birds singing in the morning. It doesn't attach the meaning. It doesn't say, oh, I have to convince other birds to sing like me, or believe what I believe, or give them something or promise. No, song happens spontaneously through the bird. Song happens through Jane as well. Painting happens to Julia and to Marika, and other activities happen through spontaneously. And we humans always attach a reason to it. Oh, this happens because I want to be famous, or no, no, I want money, or I want to save someone from hell. Or this is what not what we do. We actually recognize spontaneous activity of life without needing to drop the connection with that heart radiance of life and go to the head for the story about it. That's the sheer point. That's why you won't find genuine non-duality pointing, knocking the door like Jehovah Witnesses yeah. with the agenda to save your soul. Mm. That's why we don't go and advertise to make people believe that there is no God or there is one God or they are the absolute. It is totally not about belief system. It is about questioning the reason to have a story about everything and live from that place where you spontaneously and naturally connect with life energetically without a need to go and have it justified or reasoned. Isn't it much, much kind of simpler than having to justify and reason everything that you do? That's the, that's the beauty of it. It's less of the thinking rather than more. There is a seat here and the corner down there. That one is a good view. Oh. This one's good. Well, I want to be able to hear this. Sure. Part. This yeah, yeah. Of yeah, course. <coughs> <coughs> Would you like to comment on that? Uh, oh, no, it just went over my head, sorry. Oh, uh, no, that's, yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so the follow up question is um, Bob, what would you, what would you be expecting? for us all to do with this information? <laughs> Probably nothing, I guess, but... Hell, I can get rejection, I can get some positive feedback, I can get all sorts of things. <laughs> Don't expect anything, but let it happen. What yeah. happens, happens like pointless expecting anything. Mm. I'd love to say everybody understand it, which they already are that anyway. But it's yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, to, to have expectations, you probably know it from life, in any area of life, of people responding in particular way, or events happening in particular way, or the weather acting out in particular way. That's the very short, quick, sure way to suffering. Mm -hmm. And we don't go there. We don't go to the quick, short ways to suffering. We are actually pointing the way out of suffering. So expectation of any kind is actually competing with the spontaneity of life and imposing on that spontaneity of life or that creativity of life our preferences. So th the freedom from having any expectations and being open to the way life unfolds, that's joy. That's the natural spontaneous joy. That's like this cat that sits in front of you. It doesn't have expectations how you respond to it. It is open. It is curious. And of course, there is, like Bob said, I love what you said, the you know, heartfelt, warm wish for every one of you to be free from suffering and to find home in that joy of being, of course. But that's not a preference. That's not an expectation. That's just that sort of uh, heartfelt, loving wish. Not, if it doesn't ever happen, life is right and I am life. I'm not arguing with life. Life doesn't have to find its clear way through every pattern. 
is perfectly wonderful if the life finds a way through pattern and express us dancing, singing, even going into a story or being a, you know, an actor or being a, a writer who talks and, and writes about pain. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it can be expressed in many ways and over the centuries it has been. Some have been set mm. up as saints, sages, saviors and seers, others as hermits, others as Ascetics. Yeah, <laughs> keep in silence. And Yogis. Some have been crucified. Mm. It's gone in many different ways, but it hasn't stopped the message from being there. So, so I want to know whether, whether th th that you were spoken to there. Did you hear what was said? Was it meaningful for you? Did you get something out of that answer? Those answers. You said it went over your head. Oh. And they were lovely questions, by the way. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I just wanted to um, instigate more questions, hoping somebody else may ask some sort of question. So oh. Please. Sorry. So, so can I just... Um, so uh, it, well, the answer to your question is no. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, you know, the, the, this, the, in this room, there's a sort of a bit of a recognition that the mind is... is, is sort of like the nigger in the wood pile it's the thing that gives us angst it's the thing that gives us you know we 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 we're addicted to giving reasons for everything you know i've run out of money and so when we have that reason you know we feel w worried about it my wife's going to leave me um i'm going to die you know and we we have reasons for everything that goes on and some of those reasons give us lots of pain and and, and concern so so I think that this is this is one thing this is one uh, something to consider about the mind and its need to give answers to everything mm. beautifully said beautiful I, I actually understand that because I've been studying it for 40 years yeah lovely so I mean I know what's going on yeah yeah I understand it but yeah I guess I just have a need to talk yeah yeah. Even though I don't do much of it. <laughs> no, that's lovely. Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. Oh. He put his hand out before that. Mm. I, I just say over the head's exactly where it should be. You don't want to get it. I don't get it. I don't understand it. And if I try and understand it, I never will. Like it's so it's the idea of stepping in between the thoughts or uh, it's that spaciousness for me. If if I try and understand it's just a mess. So Mm. <laughs> it's, it's really nice to allow a knowing of not knowing. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, what's occurring uh, to me is um, like a, a sense of yeah, definitely like looking outwards and away from what is like into the past and the future oh sorry I talk up <laughs> um and then also remembering to to stay with with this moment but in a way that's also a concept as well mm. <laughs> so you really can't understand it with the mind like the mind can only do pointers uh talking and thinking about it and yeah it that that's quite a tricky thing because I agree, definitely, like, stay present and, you know, I don't want to be caught up with all that stuff. But that's just another, yeah, concept, another layer, uh, even though it's a good pointer. Um, mm -hmm. So, kind of, yeah, just leaves you uh, with what is. I guess you, you don't turn away from it and you don't turn towards it, but you're also turning away and towards it. You, you're doing everything. It's all happening, so... Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at with it. No, that's brilliant. Thanks. You just, you just really said the most important thing and the only important thing that can be actually understood by the mind. The only thing that can be understood and when it is understood, everything else springs out of that. The answer is not in the mind. That's right. The, it cannot, the, the essence of the non-duality 
the one essence, one substance, cannot be grasped by dualistic thinking, mm. by vibration. The silence, the stillness, the pure potentiality cannot be understood in the terms of narrative. That's the only thing that can be understood, not believed, but understood. And when this is understood, that narrative, that mind, that imposter, w which constantly identifies itself as I and take charge, it steps down. Mm. It says, ah, all right. If that one thing is understood, that there is no way of grasping it intellectually, no matter how smart I am, how many years I've studied, how educated I am, how long I will invest in contemplating and untangling the knot, there is no answer there. And it can't be. Because there is a direct way of knowing. And that direct way of knowing, everybody is already 100% certain of the knowing of existence. Everyone knows we exist, I exist, you exist. Even if you say, no, I don't know that. Well, you have to be there to know that you don't know <laughs> that you exist. <laughs> existence is undeniable. So, and this is it. This is really it. Everything else is what obscures it. Every the narrative, every concept, every idea is moving us away from direct knowing of existence. And putting the heart into that direct knowing and putting it out of the narrative of that entertainment of the mind, which promises always that I'll find you something better than that. And I will work it out and in future I'll get it and you will get enlightened and blissful and so on. All those concepts, ideas, they're moving us away from direct knowing which is happening all the time, equally for everyone. Eric? There's a few. <laughs> okay, that's not Peter. Oh, yeah. no. I just very quickly, quickly say that uh, um, that uh, what was I going to say? I can't remember exactly now. Give it to Monica was, and then. It's <laughs> great. Well, it's delightful to be here again after three years of COVID absence. Um, I live in the States and haven't really left my beautiful mountain residence for literally three years and very deeply immersed in the work that I do, which is painting, but painting from, I would say, painting awareness and painting from awareness. And I love what you said, Kate, uh, Katerina, because I think everything depends on the true knowledge that uh, the one life lives us completely and spontaneously. And the way to really perceive it, of course, fully, is to be quiet, still, and have a silent mind. Mm. The silent mind reveals everything because it's not the mind. <laughs> so it's been, uh, and for me, you know, knowledge, the true knowledge is this, is knowing that there is only one life and that lives us. And the only way to really do that is to be completely open and spontaneous and allow it to be spontaneously flowing, which it does mm -hmm. all the time. So the less we ponder it, um, the better and the less obstacles you put in the way. So it, for me, all this knowledge is all about how to manifest it. How do we really perfectly manifest it? That's really what it's about. And it's understanding is, is, of course, the foundation, but then what do we do with it? And how do we really live that one life? Yeah. Every moment of life, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really what it's been about, and that's what I've been doing for the last many years. <laughs> that's and really you seem happy, about. so it works. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm more than happy. There you go. Yeah, I'm mm. more than happy. And uh, actually living in that pure potentiality is, uh, I think I would say there's really such it ananda. I see. Mm. So it's, it's good to live 84 years. <laughs> <laughs> or 94. 
Like both, Absolutely. Yes. 94. Yeah. 94. Let's go for 104. Yeah, let's go for 104. Just the next step. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of comments here from people who are with us online. Uh, Tanya says, but the unpleasant sensations make the problem seem real and the one it is about. Been lost in a story lately, believing the story. Uh, yes, absolutely, Tanya. This is, you know, we are talking about the life essence, which is like God, a brilliant, infinite creator. If it wants to get lost in a story, it will create the compelling one. Don't you worry. It's like, you know, you find yourself in the role of an Oscar actor who actually forgot is acting, forgot is playing. So we do may be carried away by, by the story and completely identify as the character in the story and completely neglect the fact of, of being pure existence, just playing. Uh, yeah, because it is this infinite creativity. But that's why you have all the reminders. That's why you have the relaxation. You, the, mm, you have us too. You have your own uh, glimpses. Life facilitates it. It is a play. It's not a torture. It's a play. <laughs> and uh, Nat Kam says, love that smile. And Am says, keep shouting it. it remi uh, the reminder is important. <laughs> and she also says, M fill my heart with peace and love to listen to you both. Thank you. And Adrian says, like that, Kat. And it's arguing with life where all the problems arise, arises. Okay. Seeing the one arguing is a fabrication that hides but can be exposed. Absolutely, yeah. And Tanya, you can also see uh, that pattern of following thoughts, that pattern of identifying as a character. Because when you see that this is a mechanical behavior pattern, that this is something that is a software preconditioned, then you are looking from the freedom, always and ever. And you see the resistance. Bob often uh, nails it, always from the point of non-resistance. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you couldn't even recognize it. That's how the, the duality works. Everything that is known is known from its opposite. So we are talking about knowing and not the knowing of the content one or the other. The pure capacity for knowing is not knowing the content. And that's it. Anyone? So knowing that I am yes. would be known from its opposite of I am not. I'm just kind of like, like that, that just kind of like, <laughs> that I cannot not be. So I didn't get that. Everything that we know is known from, I like the quote. I mean, but except, I think there might be an exception to the rule. I am, I can't not be, so I, I can't not know that I am from I am not. Right? I am not, I can't not be. So there's no not of being. I just am and I can't not know. You know, I, that's like, the, that would be the exception to that rule, right? Because I really like the quote, but... Yeah. It's the knowing itself, not that I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying me so much. <laughs> Busted. What will we get? I just wanted to say that um, you can use the mind to negate what you are, to find, you know, yeah, that's a legitimate yeah. thing to do. Yeah. yeah. So I would just use it for that purpose and then, but be prepared just to come into an emptiness. Because when you say, for example, this too does not prove that I'm not God, or not that, I mean, that's, a, that's a negative, that's a negation of everything else, isn't it? Except, you know, and then you're just led into an empty space. 
which ah. is what we need to get used to. Neti neti is my. And that too is conceptual, but uh, oh. perhaps can resonate with that. So I wouldn't be afraid of the mind, just simply use it for what it's worth. Use, yeah. it, use it all up now, <laughs> to the max if you can, in, in realising what it isn't. And, well, and then you'll be led, really, yeah, exactly. Yeah, then you'll be led to this empty space we want to go to, and that's where we need to mm. just use it be. Towards, and it's helpful, I think, to, to use it skillfully <laughs> and playfully <laughs> without too much seriousness. <laughs> Julia? No, I just said that it is a tool. Yeah, yeah. And I just think it's nice to be able to use it skillfully, playfully, and without too much seriousness. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we often use the term mind a little too generically. And first of all, there are many, many multiple layers of mind. And we're talking about intellect, which is the grossest form. And the grossest form cannot do very much except figure out a, a certain logical pattern and apply it, right? But the mind has far more layers than that. And there are, you know, intuition, for instance, is a function of mind, but it's far beyond the intellect. There is also visual mind, the visionary mind, the subtle mind. All of these minds have a function, and I find them very important. But beyond that, or beyond all of these layers of mind, there is the no mind, and that is where th reality then really reveals mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. But you cannot use the intellect to do any of that work. <laughs> That's obvious. Well, you can point at it. You can reveal it using the intellect by, by whoops. You could use the mind to point at it, to 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 you know to reveal, you know, I mean, what it is that you're referring to, because you just did, didn't you? Right. Well, you yeah. then you didn't do it, of course, but the mind was being used. The mind is simply just another function. It's a function, but it's it's useful, it's very important, and 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 and, and uh, how should I say, and applicable. To but if you really want to understand the truth of what we're talking about here, you have to go way beyond that. Mm. And that way beyond that. Beautiful. That's I think Bob has something to add. <coughs> There's a saying, <coughs> I think it's a Buddhist saying, mind is the master power that moulds and makes and man is mind, and evermore he takes the tool of thought and shaping what he wills, brings forth a thousand joys, a thousand ills. He thinks in secret, and it comes to pass, environment is but a looking glass. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Wow. Mm. What is that from? As a man thinketh. As yeah. a man thinketh. Yeah. yeah. My dad That's very good. That in the <laughs> Lovely. Bob often also says that mind is a thinking pattern. And yes, there may be a very subtle thinking, or it may be a very gross thinking, that may be applying intellect or applying creative imagination. Either way, it's a, it's a thinking pattern. So it's a potentiality. Mm -hmm. There is no mind, as you said. And then the thinking pattern appears on, th on that no mind. We have so many definitions of, oh, there is a mind, oh, there is an ego, oh, there is an I, oh, there is... Well, and nobody really bothers. It's funny how everyone assumes that we have all everyone on the same page regarding the, the ego or regarding mind. So nobody bothers really explaining what it means. And in Zen, in some of the Zen Sanghas, mm. mean, mind means the emptiness of pure potentiality. It doesn't mean thinking pattern. Thinking pattern, it means in a way we are ascribing to it. Polar opposites, completely different. In Zen, they will tell you there is only mind and there is nothing else. But it doesn't mean there is only just the talking and blah, blah, blah narrative. It means there is the pure potentiality of that creative force expressing itself as the idea like the word made flesh, idea of the label creating a thing out of nothing or the projector that brings out from the homogeneous blob understanding of what something or the other is or means. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a, 
it, it, it can be a great room for confusion. Also, Marika, as you say, yes, the quiet mind is the pure light shining forth. But also, if the mind chatters, but that chatter is not attended to, it's like background noise. It doesn't obscure right. the clarity of right. being. And also mind with a capital N, yes. which the uh, Zen Buddhists refer to, is actually the one mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. The one mind. Yes. So not our little thinking, That's right. chattering mind. Yeah, yeah. And nothing's excluded and nothing separated. Yeah. Is form equals emptiness. Mm -hmm. The emptiness equals form. Mm -hmm. The E equals MC squared. Mm -hmm. The energy is matter. Matter is energy. So Potentiality is actuality. It's just mm -hmm. two sides of the mm -hmm. coin. That's why they say it's not, uh, it's not even one. Mm. Not even one. Mm. <laughs> I think someone wanted to ask uh, questions. Uh, oh, yes. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Um, well, I'm just, I'm just thinking there's the brain, and we've made the mind over the centuries and whatever. Um, so... I don't know that I'm so convinced about the mind when I think of, um, you know, the, the brain and all the research that's been done and is being done and finding out, you know, just how how the brain itself works. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you, if you go again to the direct experience, uh, can you actually experience functioning of your brain in other way than imagining there is a brain and recalling all the information that you got from study? No. Direct experience of functioning without the concepts? No. Okay. Is the, you, is you, ex you experience it in yourself. Sorry. You, you I mean... Every, everything you are, mm. really, every feeling that you have is um, that's related you know. in some way to that, that. Yes, that's what we were told. That's right. Do you think baby knows about it? Uh, no, of course not. Of course not. And no. it still exists. So direct mm. experience is not what we've learned in the past about the existence of that computer and its hardware and what fuel it uses to create particular neuropathways and, and doing that c uh, electrochemical signals which you know, make your body move and the feelings and all that. This is everything that came in that, in that pure experience of being mm. after. The, the screen is first, yeah. then what we've learned. And it is beautiful and it's helpful and it's totally enchanting and I'm totally with you just being in love with that computer and the way everything, you know, even depression is caused by certain deficiency of certain neurotransmitters and it can be fixed chemically. How amazing. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not arguing in the sense that uh, I, I find that this being being in the now and, and everything that you're saying is, is that what we're saying and you, and you, okay, um, is very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to negate oh, no, anything no. that you, yeah, um, you brought the beautiful that aspect people to it. Have, you. have said. Yeah, it's it's nothing wrong discussing the body and the computer. It's beautiful. Um. Yeah, I thought that was really uh, a good point. That um, yeah, we never really know what's where it's all yeah. happening, but we have science, we have research, we have like logic, factual, uh, you know, evidence and experiments, and um, people testing things to see how it works in this reality, um, and um, that helps us to understand more almost a little bit like a mechanical mm -hmm. kind of uh, scientific view 
um, that we can apply in, in this reality. So, for example, yeah, like if I know certain laws or rules about based on science, um, then I can really rely on that information um, in this reality <laughs> until it's not true anymore. You know, like something might randomly happen, but it's pretty reliable. It's the most reliable way of uh, thinking. And then trying to apply that to to this uh, kind of um, non-duality is... Different it's a different paradigm. yeah it's um it's yeah it's almost like we we're talking about the dream and about yeah. the awakening the closest i can come to it with my mind and it's not scientific at all but um i've often thought you know like everything is changing all the time mm. and uh, bob said as well like everything's in a constant state of flux yeah. so if everything is change and I just look at <clears throat> like the particles of everything changing all the time, mm -hmm. um, then everything changes kind of like the the substratum of this reality. Like nothing doesn't not yeah. th doesn't really change. But then because everything is changing, then in a way nothing is changing. So that's <laughs> yeah, where the, <laughs> the that's thing right. falls apart. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I can reliably say, I don't need to be a scientist. I can say everything is changing. Mm. Um, but if I really follow that through, it's also equally true that nothing is changing. Yeah. So it's kind of the and mm. it, it change, constant change within the change. Yeah, it's not changing. Yeah. I think that's where the mind, at least my mind, gets stuck. <laughs> well, it doesn't get stuck. It's just that's the limit. It can't really handle both. <laughs> when mm. It's not designed. It's zero or one. It's like a computer. So it's. Yeah, it's either everything's changed or and nothing's changing, but it can't really do see both at the same time. Yeah, mm -hmm. in, in the mind. Mm -hmm. But um, so change is constant. Yeah. yeah, constant. But then it's yeah, it's change because it's constant. It's kind of like change. yeah, nothing changes. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I know that's the closest I can mm -hmm. relate from a logic standpoint. To yeah, yeah, brilliant. Things. Lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that empty space is changeless. Like, what is what the words point at? You know what I mean? But uh, do it's you know like, that? <laughs> well, do I know that? Mm. that yeah. Just? No, that's not words. That's that's like, it's it's always the background. Look, the even, background even doesn't change. Say, even to say whether something changed or it doesn't change, you have to have a, a reference point, right? Yeah. You have to have a big picture of the of the time. It doesn't change in what in milliseconds, in a year, in eternity. There is there is a lot of thinking to even verify anything at all. No, I'm, but the thinking is not what I'm referring to. Yeah. So do that doesn't really change. I'm saying what I'm referring to that doesn't change is that which the thoughts appear on. Is that which mm. is beyond the thoughts? Yes. That's changeless. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I, I would say I don't really know well, I can use the thing I use with the ocean ever changing but never changing different waves, patterns of spiritual surface but it's still only the ocean also the idea that there is a changeless screen that is different from the content, that there is a thing called changeless screen, has never been found. That's why we say it neither exists nor it doesn't. But it has never been found, the substratum or basic screen or emptiness, mm. it can't be found. So we can't even say whether it is or it isn't. That's the conundrum, that's how beyond completely beyond any so sense of knowability it is. And that's beautiful because, you know, that's, that's the exquisite opportunity to actually be, I remember Gilbert said it once, be the Shiva with one eye open watching the Shakti dance. You know, you the emptiness watching the change, watching the different belief systems, 
science, which is absolutely wonderful belief system, which been created by thousands of hours in the dream mm. of quality energy invested into the research and everything. But it is also changing. It is also not final. And we have a soft spot, Bob and I, rather to science and nutrition than to, to uh, various religions. But this is the content of the dream. We, the character, dream character Bob, ca dream character Kat, and having the bodies and the brains and the science, that is the content of the dream. Within that dream, we can rely on that content. We can rely on the research showing us that the vitamin C boosts immune systems. But we know it is the dream. We know that that body is dreamt, just like the body at night is dreamt. Does the body, when you dream at night, has the brain or not? Is any dopamine running the mobility of the body or not? Th those questions, they belong to a different dream. So it, as much as it is lovely, and we are totally mind blown by the complexity of this beauty of the dream, and neuroscience, oh my goodness, psychology, wow, art, oh my God, isn't it just an exquisite expression of infinite creativity and mind-blowing beauty? Totally, but it is a content of the dream. How lovely. And we can totally appreciate it. All of it. <laughs> we are the we are the dreaming. We are not you know, it's not like there is me and the life and they are two. No, the life is only life. It creates through the dreams, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta speak loud, I couldn't hear you. No, no, I, I, it was just a comment. I said, that is the function, so-called, of who we are. <laughs> Endless eye of tornado swirling outside and calm changeless within. That's Enki says, beautifully said. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk to Tristan's point and the science and the science in the dream as well because even the quantum physics now it's yeah. not only weirder than you can think yeah it's not only weirder than you think it's weirder than you can think yeah, according to weirder than you can think quantum mm. physics and particles <laughs> exist in both states so Schrodinger's cat you know the idea yeah. of the experiment we've got a cat and it's a random decision whether some poison is released or not mm. and the, the quantum physics says that that cat is both alive and dead yeah until you look it's only consciousness that changes the outcome mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. particles can be in two, are in two places at one time until mm -hmm. consciousness looks at it mm -hmm. so even the science mm -hmm. is kind of saying the same thing yeah mm. yeah the answer is in everything mm. and find the truth in farming potatoes <laughs> because it is all life it is all the same truth expressing through everything mm. Even, I was actually, uh, sometimes we joke about, you know, Adam and Eve uh, kicked out from heaven because uh, they learned about the good and bad differentiating. Or we talk about Xin Xin Ming saying that heaven and earth can never be set apart. That's, you know, when you actually think of a pointer of heaven, what is the heaven? You go to heaven. When you die, you go to heaven. This is not a paradise. A heaven is an empty space. How wrong is that? Even something that we usually laugh, oh yeah, maybe 17 virgins will serve you, or <laughs> maybe you're gonna sit on the tree and, and sing Hosanna with the tight uh, aureole. Uh, it's, it, that's a joking, but really the pointer is not far from the truth. Even the, you know, the beliefs that we give to children on religion lessons, you go to heaven. But if you look deeply, the truth is everywhere. It's just if you know where to look and how to look. Because if you're looking through your heart, you find it. Yeah. If you look it through your head, you will argue with everything and you will pull down and destroy every pointer. Mm -hmm. Every yeah. single pointer mm -hmm. can be pulled apart and made wrong. Bob often say that. Here, yeah, the description is not the described. Mm never can be the described. But if you look through the heart, you know that everybody already knows that. Whatever anyone says, there is a deep knowing that they are. 
and that deep knowing that they are can sometimes go and evolve into a little story but the deep knowing is unobscured you can just pull it out because everyone knows that everyone's already that knowing I have a story and this Agatha tells you you're dreaming a dream you call the world yeah love all of it or none of it because then it means have no position whether you love or hate or do nothing if everything is equal then nothing is equal if you in include everything that nothing's included or excluded have the same attitude towards everything be it pleasant it doesn't matter what's the attitude if it is the same that actually annihilates the whole distinction. And What's what your story coming up for me is um, everything's perfectly resolved in the unborn Beautiful. Buddha mind. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. That's it. It's a lovely point. And Julia, you, you had a story. Come on. Oh, nah. It's not important. It was just some, you kind of made me think of something when you talked okay. about the heaven of 70 virgins. <laughs> Robin Williams commented on that, and he said, you know, any of you have been with one virgin? I'm not sure that would be <laughs> paradise, <It's laughs> 70 of them. Wouldn't it be better to have 70 prostitutes? <laughs> 70 what? Prostitutes. <laughs> Experienced girls who know how to give you pleasure. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Isn't it good to love? Yes. <laughs> That's the lightness of being, traveling lighter, like Bob was saying initially. Lightness. Throwing all the concepts away and being light. Or blowing all the clouds away and seeing light. Call. Give us a give us a bird. <laughs> Just something that uh, occurred to me, Jim Carrey. I don't know whether people saw the uh, I think it's a documentary or a movie about Jim Carrey when he played. I can't remember the name of the actor either, but it was a comedian, and he got so much into the role that he you know he'd eat the role, he'd be in the role when he went home, went to bed. If the director spoke to him as if he was Jim Carrey, he'd shout at him and say, I'm not Jim Carrey. And a lot of people said he absolutely lost his mind, like he went Being Andy or something. Yeah, being Andy, that, that's it. Mm -hmm. Andy Kaufman, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, I don't know if you've seen him speak after that, but basically when he, when he finished the movie, he said, well, if I can, if, like, if that, who, who is Jim Carrey then? So yeah. um, I don't have to go back to that pain, that suffering, that depression, that, you know? Yeah. And so that, not having to go back for him was that shift where he just mm. he was just open to being anything mm. beautiful that's so fascinating to look up he's talking about uh, what it was like for him after the movie mm. yeah. very inspirational can't mm. we actually just look at the roles we are playing and see if we didn't get stuck in any of our roles because it is the fluid the fluidity of life and yet we've been told we're frauds if we emulate somebody else you know how when you're trying to um i don't know you want to be a business person and they'll say well pick a you know pick somebody that you would like to be like Mm. and read their biography and emulate them <laughs> and you're led to feel that if you totally absorb that person's personality as Jim did um, you, you're you told you're a fraud you're not being yourself <laughs> and yet we what I'm understanding is we're not ourselves anyway that's right we're still Emulating uh, a manifestation of somebody else's <laughs> beliefs yeah. that we took on without <coughs> realizing it like our parents and Absolutely. friends and stuff so mm. uh ah that's quite encouraging then so i wouldn't be a fraud then <laughs> no you are the totality you yeah. can be anything great i choose god <laughs> there you go. that you are that you are 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've just keep thinking of this um, this great song that I've just learnt. I'm not going to sing it, but the words are rusted brandy in a diamond glass. Everything is made of dreams. Time is made of honey, slow and sweet. Only a fool knows what it means. Temptation, temptation. I can't resist. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> yeah, I'll sing it. <laughs> okay, go on. Rust of brandy in a diamond glass. Everything is made of dreams. Time is made of honey, slow and sweet. Only a fool knows what it means. Temptation. 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 I can't resist. <laughs> it's the temptation of getting back into the mind, you know, yeah. and, and naming and claiming. That's how I see it. Yeah. Did you write that down? No, no. Um, Tom Waits wrote it, uh -huh. but I do the um, Diana Kroll version. I'll sing it for you this afternoon, Marika. With the band. <laughs> Do you take other requests? <laughs> <laughs> I'll sing anything for money. <laughs> <laughs> and Enki says, love the song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Heaven and Seventy James singing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm looking forward to some peace and quiet actually. <laughs> Yeah, and Kat, you said to me, "Come on, Carl," and 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 I shook shook my head, and I think that you know, that Peter said something earlier. He says, um, "What was it?" He said, "He says there's nothing special, you know," yeah. and mm -hmm. and 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 of course that's right. Yeah. And but the, the but the other side of the coin is that everything is unique. Absolutely. Everything, and I was just thinking, what a lovely wonderful diversity of expression mm. that mm. people are doing in this room yeah. True. it's mm. just unique it is it, and 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 when you look around you there's so much beauty in that uniqueness yes yeah, mm. yeah. and nothing none of that is the mind it's yeah. just <sighs> mm. the flow of consciousness yeah, yeah. Mm. and it's and it's because we've been welcomed to speak here Whereas a lot, at a lot of other uh, teachers, you know, you just listen to the teacher and then go home, you know. But this is all because of Bob. Thank yeah. you, Bob. Yeah. Thank you for welcome, welcoming us. <laughs> Sorry, I know you're not there really, but... <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> just gratitude for being welcome to speak. Yeah, and I suspect that that is the secret of his incredible effectiveness in, mm. in his work. Mm. Because he starts from the fact that there is no one to teach anyone anything. Mm. We are all equally being here, all equally certain of being. There is no one who is not that. Mm. And when you bring it out from yourself, it's the same life speaking. And he recognizes it. That's Even right. if there is anyone here who is not certain, well... Forget about it. He is. I am. And many of us yeah, here. Yeah. Are. And I think just to what your point was way, way back in the beginning of the meeting, it's just come up here for me. Why, why does Bob do this? Well, I think any of us who come to the truth come because of pain. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when you're relieved of that pain, it's a spontaneous arising that you want to share that with others. That, that's, that's, if I had to say why I ever tell anybody about truth, uh, when it arises, I, I know the pain that I felt when I was locked into a, an, an imaginary Jane. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I see somebody else suffering and, and you know, they're open, 
to hearing how I'm now travelling lighter because of this understanding, then it's, be, it's just a natural wanting to share it um, because it's, it is like, you know, for most of your life you're going up a mountain with a big backpack of rocks and then all of a sudden you're just zipping up the mountain, travelling lighter, you know, and it's because, you know, the thoughts that used to bond you to this imaginary self mm. are free. Beautifully said. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing when you uh, were talking. Uh, that, that was the idea of my question, is to get people to think. Well, well, uh, uh, or to ask more <laughs> questions, actually. Yeah. It, it was really just to, to reiterate what you were saying. Uh, and, you know, when I used to be an evangelical Christian, and I remember the pastor was l complaining about how many people weren't going out and evangelizing. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, you know, you haven't got it because if you, you it's like, like a child, it doesn't, have to be t it doesn't have to be told by its parents to tell its friends how wonderful its, pre its Christmas present was. <laughs> it will want to go out there and show it what yeah. it got for Christmas. It's <laughs> yeah. just in it, yeah. you know, mm. spilling like, over. Yeah, Bob said he, sh he wanted to shout it from the brain. And, and, that, was, yeah. and that was my experience when I was there. Mm. You know, you just, you didn't have to be forced. You know, you just, you'd come across, like you were saying about living s spontaneously. You know, you'd probably be sat in a cafe and just feel inspired to have a conversation with somebody and then it turns around to this thing and you, you just can't stop no, something right. coming out that's of right. you. Joy, yeah. you would identify with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a... Uh, you can't stop it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done it with tech support. What <laughs> 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 Done it with a tech support. You Speaking know, of um, skill to everyone who <laughs> she can capture, I have. I've done. I've kept them on for two hours. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> You're nothing. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I don't, there's no planning when that happens either. It's just well, I've like used the wrong word. sharing. I mean, fine. I mean, like yeah. you, you yeah. migrate that somehow a divine or whatever, mm. you know, a universal connection happens just from being open to the prompting if you like and then you just spill over <laughs> yeah you just find yeah. the right person at the right time yeah, yeah, yeah but we don't yeah. find them it yeah, just it happens, just happens. It exactly just happens. Yeah. If you're but, but, open. you know what's just happening is tomorrow though mm -hmm. i gotta plug it oh, yes. Tomorrow, this is a commercial break. It's uh, yeah, nine. Yeah, the people who are online, they can't come to the pool party. So perhaps we can just say that we're gonna be ah. To, yeah, That's for next week. Oh, yeah. I'm talking for tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. For for, yeah, yeah. for, for uh, tomorrow. <laughs> if if you're in the United States, you can go to sailorbobadamson.com and go to the meetings page, and you'll find out where to meet us on Zoom. Mm. I just want to say that I've known Bob now for, I think, at least 10 or 12 years, right? At least. And I've been coming here every time I came back to, the, back to Australia. And I must say, Bob, you know, it's, it's who you are. It's <coughs> who you are that, that is the, uh, the message. You live. You live it. And you are that. Wow. That is the lesson for all of us. Wow. We are there, but we have to really be there consciously and accept the truth of who we are. And you, you, you do that whether you are here or whether you are outside walking or whether you go to a cafe or whatever. You are that, Bob. And that's, that's the inspiration. That speaks volumes. And that to me is, that's, that's it. <laughs> I don't live it, it lives me. It lives you, that's right. Uh, he says he doesn't leave it, it leaves him. That's right. And so it does with everyone, whether it is obscured by the <coughs> concepts and, and habits and ways of imitating. I have, we are over time, but I have one last uh, contribution from our online community. Hey, you says, I think when you emulate someone, I think you are introducing conflict and therefore violence. 
uh, the key point is I think. <laughs> I think you emulate, when I think you emulate, I think you introduce in conflict. Everything you compare yourself is violent, like typical story. You, uh, why don't you be like your brother and blah, blah, blah. Yes, that's what happens when you think. You know, when you hear the tune in your voice, and you sat in your head, and you suddenly find yourself humming that tune, that's how the brain learns. It learns through imitation. And there's nothing bad, and it's nothing violent, and there's no comparison in it. All the learning, all the behaviors I learned through imitation, and other animals do it as well. But when you think, of course, then the story comes. Oh, you should be doing, you shouldn't be doing. Like what Gina was saying, oh, it is, uh, what is it? It's a uh, fraud being a fraud. All that conceptual overlay is a fantastic example of what Ian was asking about. What happens when you have to justify everything that spontaneously unfolds in life? So thank you, Hey You. That was a really good comment to actually wrap it all up. And thank you, everyone. I just wanted to make an announcement that uh, against our previous arrangements, we do have the meeting in a Christmas day on the request of the community and uh, we are really moved and touched by that request because it means we really are sort of a family uh, setting here and that's lovely. So we are going to be online streaming and we are going to be uh, gathering here as every week. So thank and you everyone. If you happen to be in town. If you happen to be in town, we're going to have follow up also. Yeah. Thanks everyone.